because the hustle and bustle of IFO is no joke. I am doing my first qualifying pass right now, right now for the FIP class, Forced Induction Pro. I am hugely outgunned in this class. I'm embarrassed to even be in line with all these cars with parachutes and such. Like, in front of me is a GTR with a parachute. In front of him is a Mark IV Supra with a parachute. Behind me is a GTR. So, uh, it's gonna be a, an experience, but I really don't fit in any other class. I'll go more into that later. As for right now, we're targeting 23 PSI, more than ever before. And let's see how the car does down the track. in time for second round qualifying in the 11.5 class. To run this class, I'm targeting only like 12 pounds of boost and using no nitrous stain, just leaving off of the converter. And this got me an 11.8, which was definitely good enough to qualify for this class. Three. All right, y'all. First round of eliminations, I got a competition by. I got it show up and everyone else in the class almost.
That was the motor. That was the motor. Just blew the motor for sure. It smells like crazy in here. My GoPro's not working. So I'm getting the tow right now from this ni nice fella with the track crew on his four wheeler. Uh, it doesn't look like I ruined the track, which is good. There was definitely a bunch of smoke, car laid over, and it did not continue to run. I'll catch you guys up in a minute. Last night started tearing it apart. It's not looking good, y'all. I don't really know the severity of the damage here yet, but it is real obvious that two of these pistons have left the chat. Uh, they're still there. I don't see any sign that anything came loose and bobbled around in the cylinder. So I think the cylinder head's okay. Here's how I did this. So I pulled the head with the exhaust turbo and everything on it. But uh, anyway, everything here seems fine. So if we come over here to our short block, you can see uh, piston's a little thin over here on the edge. You can see a piston ring down there. I uh, shouldn't see that much space right there. That eh, puppy's a different size than it used to be. That one looks all right, that one looks all right. Uh, this one's more of the same, just as bad, really. So cylinder one and four are in bad shape. Uh, the other ones don't look nearly as bad. So what I'm seeing, if you look on the cylinder wall, there's like this transfer of metal. I, mean, I think that's aluminum. I think that is aluminum. It's on the thin, it's on the cylinder wall, right next to the thin spot of the piston. I think that will just hone off. I don't think that's a big problem, but that still remains to be seen. I think there's a kind of acid you can put on that that'll burn away the aluminum, but not the steel. But I don't know about that for sure either. I saw that on a YouTube video once, but anyway, I gotta get the pistons out of here to see the extent of the damage to the block. I'm hoping the block's okay, and then I'm just gonna throw some more cheapo pistons in this thing and turn it down a little bit and have a good running car that I can go and have fun with. Honestly, my short track's not good enough to go full send anyway. I really just need this car to work until I get one of those engines built. So I'm gonna be doing pi pistons and rods in one of my other two J's. This one I just wanna repair, as long as it's repairable. So, uh, in order to get the upper oil pan off of this engine, I do have to drop the entire cradle up here. So that's what I'm gonna be doing next. All right, you guys, I'm probably about three to four hours into the tear down here and I have just popped the pistons free of the block. So I'm gonna be pulling them out one by one and looking at them with you guys, just to let you know, give you kind of an idea of what this process looks like, getting the car torn down to this level. Obviously this engine isn't really designed to be in this car and uh, some of you may not know, whenever I installed the engine into the car, I welded steel plates onto the frame rails on either side and used and welded um, used uh, chromoly tubing and steel plates to create solid engine mounts on for either side of the engine, meaning the engine is actually supported by the body of the car, not the subframe. So in order to get access to uh, the bottom of the connecting rods, I had to remove the lower and upper oil pan. To do that, I got to drop the cross member. That's not a big deal to do, honestly. 
As you can see, the strut and the brake stay on the car, as well as the front little strut rod and um, the K members right here. And there you have my um, upper and lower oil pans. So with that, the engine is just supported and you can get to everything you need to. So it's kind of nice for from a serviceability standpoint. So this has actually worked out really good. But as you can see, I got all my pistons kind of popped up. So let's give these things a good look. We already know number one's thrash. Let's just, let's go right for it, boys. All right, I'm gonna carefully pull her out of there. Let's get her over here to the table. Um, the bearing fell out of this one when I removed it. So. So where, there she is, look at that. Busted piston rings. Ooh, we have holes in the piston. We melted holes in the piston. We broke ring lands. Here's a piece of ring land. Yikes. This is total destruction. So this was the worst spark plug by far. Here's some more ring land. This is chunks of the casting of the piston. And uh, you can see the, the edge here of the crown is thrashed and that's what's all over our cylinder wall. Now we have, you can see right through the piston. Yikes. That is honestly a little worse than I expected. That's pretty bad. Ah, uh, man, I gotta look at that cylinder wall. I really don't want to. Oh, it's actually pretty smooth. Actually not too bad. Obviously we got some transfer of aluminum right here. And uh, man, I think if I can get that out of here, we might be okay. So that's pretty promising, actually. That's not too bad. But let's see what we did to the other ones. Carefully pull this out. So this piston actually looks okay. This cylinder wall should look fine. It appears to. Cool, moving on. Cylinder number three. This piston seems to have survived as well. Which kind of begs the question, why were some pistons so much worse off than others? All right, piston number four. This was our other bad boy. Ooh, I feel shit. Oh my God. Oh, this is bad. Sheesh, y'all, Jesus. Okay, block might be toast, dude. Block might be toast. My God, y'all. Jesus Christ, look at that ring. Wow, 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 wow. Okay. <sighs> Send prayers, boys. Send prayers for the block. Man, again, we have a lot of transfer, but underneath all that mess is smooth. I'll just have to see about getting rid of the aluminum and inspecting what's underneath. All right, next boy. This one looks pretty okay too. Okay, and last one, which I'm pretty sure is totally fine. Number six. Ooh, no, this one's got a broken land. There it is. Oh, it's a big chunk. It's trying to come out right now. <laughs> All right, there might be more going on here than what we see, but we're for sure not putting any of these pistons back in. But, uh, oh, man. Besides the transfer of aluminum into the cylinder, I think we might have fared okay. I can't get the best look while I'm holding the camera. I'll stick a light down there and get a closer look. But, uh, boy, we freaking did it here. And you know, everybody said that these were the wrong piston for the job. These are the stock GE VVTI pistons. And everyone said they were no good. And you know, I made a lot of power with these pistons. I made a lot of power. I went really fast down the track. Um, Jeff at Power Dynamics told me they were gonna pop the ring lands off. He said, those are gonna break ring lands. Don't use those pistons. Before I even put it in the car, it was on a stand over there. And he came over and whenever he bought my, my IS 300 and he told me, take those pistons out, put something else in. And I was like, nah. Well, look at me now, dude. Yikes. But something that might be difficult to be able to observe is how thick it is in those grooves under the rings. I bet you it popped through there, created a, a pathway for gases to go, and all that hot blue lean torch just went through that hole and, and wallered it out, and the rest is history. So anyway, those are trash. The rods are probably fine, I'm sure. Those are nice GTE rods. I'll give them a good look over, make sure they're okay. But uh, 
We'll see what the plan is. I'm gonna see how good I can clean up the block. If I can clean up the block good, here's what I'm gonna do, boys. I'm either gonna get some stock GTE pistons or I'm gonna get some aftermarket DNJ GE non-VVTI stock replacements, which is what I ran in Ursula. They were an okay piston. They did pretty good. And then I'm gonna put the car back together with cast pistons. Here's why. I don't wanna put that much time into this engine because I'm gonna do that with these engines with forged pistons and, and rods. I'm gonna make one good engine with all forged internals and I'm gonna have keep this engine on a cast piston. I'm gonna get it cleaned up, get it running really nicely and continue to have fun with it until the strong engine is done, at which point I'll pull the swap and then I'll have that engine to do whatever I want with. But I am not quite in a position where I can have this car down and in pieces like this for the amount of time it's gonna to take to do all the machine work and you know, I'd have to pull the block out and that's gonna be a whole other hassle. So I think I'm just gonna fix this engine. When I do go in with forged internals, it's gonna get a bigger turbo, it's gonna get a new intercooler, it's gonna get probably more tire if, you know, I'd like to wear those out a little more, but more tire and just more cowbell in general. All right, boys, we're out here in the garage again and uh, I ordered a whole bunch of parts today. I ordered like $600 worth of parts. Pistons, rings, rod bearings, head gasket, uh, some seals. Everything I need to get this motor back together with some fresh pistons in it, but this is all riding on one very serious reality that we have to consider, which the block may be too damaged to reuse. So what I'm working on right now is I went ahead and ordered the stuff. I feel good about it. I'm taking a chance, rolling the dice. Uh, basically what I ordered was some more cast pistons. D don't, okay? Don't come at me about this. We're putting cast pistons back in this thing, but they're not gonna be stock VVTI pistons this time. They're gonna be the DNG, DNJ uh, GE non-VVTI style piston that we ran in Ursula the Lexus. So a slight upgrade, but uh, not by a lot. Basically my intentions are just put this car back together the way it is so I can have some fun. TX2K weekend, can do a little bit of hooning. Uh, they got a, um, a small tire gangsters event coming up. Uh, Yellow Belly that has a six to 630 index random draw on what the index is and i'd really like to be a part of that too uh so got a couple things going on we gotta get the car ready for but we have to figure out is this block worthy can we go on so right now what i'm doing is i'm soaking the cylinders with some muriatic acid so this is a good trick to get rid of aluminum material that has been scorched onto the cylinder walls it eats up the aluminum much faster than it does the iron so you soak it on there, it gets to work, and we should be able to just scrub it off. And I don't think it's super thick on the walls, so I think we're gonna have a good outcome here. Let me show you how it's going. All right, so this is what we're using. I have a swimming pool, so I already had this junk sitting out in the shed. So I've already applied it onto the aluminum on hole number one. And uh, you can see it's just there kind of sizzling along, just bubbling up, I'm looking like it's working. I'm just using a Q-tip to get a little bit on. And we're just applying it just like this. It's kind of, I can really feel it in this little strip right here. Everything up here kind of just came right off. Everything down here kind of just came right off. And I can really just feel it wiping, you can see it wiping away. And we just kind of work on it. So we got this strip in the middle. Uh, this has only been on there for a couple minutes. I have only just begun this process. Uh, so I think it's working pretty good. So we're gonna let that go. Uh, definitely this cylinder got it much worse. Cylinder number four got it pretty bad. So we're gonna need to give it a good soak. I'm gonna go ahead and start soaking it up. We end up with this black all over the Q-tip. And I'm just gonna rub it up dub. This stuff will choke you out too. You don't wanna breathe this in. Wear a respirator or something, you know, protect yourself. But uh, yeah, that's how we're doing that. And uh, this is a pretty tried and true method, and I've seen pretty good outcomes on the YouTube, so hopefully we will get the same wonderful results. All right, so we've gotten pretty good results on number one. It's got this little bit remaining that we're working on still. Number four, this cylinder was pretty thrashed, and uh, it's come a long way too. So we're still just kind of like applying and then letting it sit for a little bit, letting it just bubble and take over, and then wiping down and repeating over and over again. I do have some uh, plastic covering up the journals on the cylinders I'm doing, just trying to keep acid from dripping onto those journals. I might've already said that. So over here, let's take a little walk to the, down the trail of destruction. 
All right, so I pulled all the pistons off of the rods. So one thing I didn't foresee here that I'm just figuring out is that these rods are just coated and have just been powder coated with aluminum. And like, it's like, looks like concrete. Like, look at the contrast. You can see where it starts, blew a hole through the piston and then just sprayed liquid aluminum all over this rod. That really has me thinking, like, where else is there just sprayed liquid aluminum? Like, should I be worried about what was in the engine? Like, is that all down there somewhere? I don't know. These are questions I have to wonder. Um, but as we already know, this one's thrashed. This is so interesting to me. How it like eroded away like sand. Like, isn't that cool looking? I mean, it's really sad. But, uh, anyway, interesting stuff. Bunch of pieces of ring land. We had lots of ring land breakage on number one. Uh, so this is the number four rod. And you can see how much worse the aluminum is on this one. So looking at the top for contrast, this is the clean side. And this side is just black. And I mean, that aluminum is just solidified on contact. And that's not coming off. I put some acid on it to see, like, how it might clean up. But I'm just going to call that toast. bought an extra set of GTE rods a few months ago because um, I thought I might build another GTE rod motor for someone who wanted to buy one, but that never really came to fruition. So anyway, I got some extra parts for this, so that'll come in handy. All right, you guys, new development. I started honing on these cylinders, and I was able to get cylinders one and four pretty well cleaned up from the aluminum material that was stuck to the walls. Uh, when I was wiping them out with a paper towel, I felt a lot of roughness in cylinder number five. After taking a closer look, I found that in an area of the cylinder that I was not actually able to see all that clearly, there is quite a bit of sidewall damage. All right, so I'm gonna take you down into number five and you can see that's really obvious. And that one didn't have a piston failure, so I thought everything would be okay, but we have a lot of scoring on that cylinder. You can feel that, you can catch it with a nail. That's no good. That's not coming out with a hone. This block is gonna have to be oversized to go back into service. What we're gonna do now is get this engine out of here and we're gonna pick one of these blocks to clean up and run with a standard size cast piston. Just make a repair, drop it in here, have some more fun, have a car that works. And in the meantime, I will build a decent respectable motor with this block here. But now the plan is I got to take a good look at these, figure out which one of these I want to use. I think it's going to be this one, the better of the two. And uh, I think that's going to be the call. All right, so I'm in the garage now, working on this motor. I got the cylinders honed out last night and uh, the deck surface cleaned up for the most part. Uh, it all looks okay. The deck surface does have a little bit of very light pitting, but nothing to be concerned about. So I had to go to the parts store and get some degreaser and a socket for that damn oil filter adapter. But there's something interesting here. So I pulled out the rods and pistons and they are for sure stock VVTi rods and pistons. Um, but one thing that was interesting is when I pulled the rod out and removed the cap, all of the rod bearings that came out of this engine look brand new. There's no marks on them. They still have just like a super perfect coating. Every single one of them. Looks like someone put rod bearings in this engine and then never started it again. Like never started it with them this is what it looks like. I don't know why that is. I am gonna clearance check the mains too. And if those look brand new as well, then uh, well, I mean, I guess I got a whole bunch of new uh, bearings in the engine. I already bought rod bearings thinking I'd need them to run uh, since I'm swapping out rods anyway. But uh, anyway, I thought that was quite fascinating. Wow. Wow. Whoa. Wow. Okay, all of our piston rings are gapped, as you can see here. I did just want to drop this in here to uh, kind of help us put our heads together and better understand what caused the cylinder wall damage that took place on the old engine. It has nothing to do with the melted piston or running lean or detonation or any of that. Uh, I could have just cleaned up those cylinders and put that engine back together. But uh, because we had this weird piston ring thing happen, we're having to do all of this. 
This is uh, not the same engine that's in the car. I just painted it the same color because it's the paint that I already had. Anyway, let's take a look at this and try to understand what may have happened here. So you see here the oil piston ring. Now this is a very thin ring. This is not nearly as thick as any of the top rings or either of the top rings. And um, what it looks like happened is one end of it rolled over and in doing so made it kind of jut out the side. Whenever I first started looking at this piston after I discovered the damage on the cylinder wall, I could not push that little, that little ring to be flush with the side of the piston. It was trapped somehow. And I don't see what had it stuck out. Like I thought like, man, did something get under that ring and like cause it to just jut out like that? But there was nothing in the groove. Like it's totally weird. My speculation is that that happened whenever I was applying the ring compressor. It must have just gotten tweaked in a, in a weird position. I clamped it down, it bent it, and it's been that way ever since I assembled this engine. Uh, another theory is that maybe the end gaps of the, of the oil control ring uh, closed up whenever we started making some power and it caused it to bend and deflect like that. Um, I don't think that's what happened. I mean, this ring, these oil control rings are so light, are so flimsy, and there's a lot of room in the groove for it to, if it, if it did butt up or get bound up in that way from a expansion, thermal expansion, there'd be plenty of room for it to just kind of wave, you know? Like, I don't see uh, the two rings coming together like that and causing this problem, but maybe that is what happened. Uh, I don't know what those were gapped to previously. Um, I have, uh, in my old videos where I was assembling it, uh, I know what the top two rings were gapped to, but I don't know what the lower ones were or if they were really adjusted at all. Um, so I'm not sure, but it's a big bummer. I'm hoping it doesn't happen this time. I did make sure to loosen up the gap on the oil control rings on this engine, just to fingers crossed it doesn't happen again because like, I don't know what's worse, like seeing that you screwed up something and, and have to do all this extra work or not knowing what you screwed up and not knowing if, what you could do to prevent it from happening again. Honestly, I think I'd take the former. But getting it all put together now, we got our DNJ pistons on the bench as well as some new used GTE rods that I got from a fella in the uh, 2J Facebook group. And uh, we're gonna be going with a totally different set of rods. Let's get a close look at the rods we're using now, the GTE connecting rods, and compare them to what comes in the GE VVTi engine for comparison's sake. So here we can see a GTE rod next to the stock VVTi rod. Obviously a difference in the overall width of the rods. Also the thickness, substantially different as you can see. And these little toothpicks are just no good. Um, now let's move on to the piston. I think if we would have had a nice safe tune, we maybe could have ran them a little longer, maybe, but who knows how long those ring lines have been broken. And uh, really like, the torching of the pistons could have just been a direct result of that. You know, once that ring land breaks off, it's much thinner material behind the piston. And that's where we started to see the hole burn through it. So VVTi pistons are junk. Don't try them. If you haven't built your engine and you're watching this, change your plans. If you already built it and you left them in there, because that's what I did on my other build, then, you know, try to keep it under 23 pounds of boost and uh, nice and rich. And you might be okay for a little bit. But I do think these are a better piston here. Um, my machinist tells me these are much better than the stock VVTi pistons. These are more um, comparable to the GTE pistons. That's not to say they're as good. I don't know that. But my machinist tells me that they're fine. They're okay to make a fair amount of power on a safe tune. So I'm going to get these things all put together. We got rods, wrist pins, pistons. We got all of our rings lined up here. So I'm gonna go ahead and get these pistons assembled and ready to drop in. Then I'm gonna get the crankshaft in. I pulled the crankshaft. You'll see it here on the floor. This is crazy. All of the bearings, all the main bearings are brand new. Look at this. These are brand new main bearings that came out of this engine. This engine had these filthy piece of shit pistons in it. These stock piston, stock rod, filthy used pistons with brand new main bearings and brand new rod bearings. All of them are just brand new. These things have not been in a running engine. This is all brand new stuff. 
That's very strange to me. That raises a lot of questions for me. So seeing that, I wanted to pull the crankshaft out of the car, take a look at the thrust bearings, take a look at the other bearing halves, and um, go ahead and just mic the crankshaft mains and journals and see if everything is okay there. Uh, I'm gonna get a, just a quick mic reading to make sure they're close, you know, to they're within the window of, of um, tolerable allowance. And then I'm going to do a quick plastic gauge measurement on them and make sure all our mains and all of our rods is, uh, is all kosher. Then we're gonna start putting this thing together and uh, see how fast we can get it done. gauge measurements taken on all of our mains uh, some of them have already kind of washed away this is all oil soluble stuff for the plastic gauge so um, you can kind of try to wipe it up with a little bit of oil on a rag but it doesn't really matter because they say it will not harm your bearings or cause any issue at all if you can't you know if you leave it on there so mains look good everything is measuring between or a little over two thousands of clearance which is fine now we're going to do our final install of all of our mains. We're reusing the bearings that are all like brand new. And uh, we're gonna have those in there and torque down to spec. And then we'll go ahead and get the pistons mounted onto the rods and get them installed and get them clearance checked and torqued down. And then our rotating assembly will be good to go. Pistons are assembled, snap rings verified, direction of the rods in correlation with the pistons is all confirmed. Everything looks good there. They're all numbered, ready to go into the block. So we're gonna use our spring compressor, get these things squeezed up, start popping them in and running them down to our uh, connecting rod journals. And then we'll get all that plastic gauged and confirmed and then move on to the next step. It's Sunday now at 12.30 a.m. I'm still in the garage. I didn't do this all weekend, okay? I spent a little time with the family. I actually did an impressive amount of things this weekend. Uh, not least of which is completely assembling a long block assembly, like, from a bare block. So, that's how I got done. But what we're doing right now is throwing the motor in the car. This is, I'm just a wreck right now because I really can't stop. I've been going and going, not because I'm really wanting to get so much done today, but I have to get the cherry picker back to work tomorrow. I also have some other equipment I need to return that we will miss if I do not. So what I'm doing right now is I'm just going to set our long block back into Goldie. I'm not tightening a single thing. I'm gonna line it all up, set it down, load this crap in the truck, and then try to get some sleep. All right, well, I moved a mountain last night. I was gonna take it easy tonight, get some rest, get caught up on some sleep, but I got too much work to do. So I'm gonna just come out here and just do a little bit. As you can see, I got the engine in the car. So tonight I'm just gonna get my cams on and just see what I can get done. Just kind of chip away at this monster a little bit at a time. Ideally, I'd like to be ahead of schedule here and have the car back together before Friday because I also have this guy right here. You can kind of see this right here. That's a 10 gallon fuel cell that I'm gonna be putting in the car because I'm just kind of tired of the little five gallon. I'd like to be able to drive the car a little bit more. A larger fuel tank would kind of let me stretch my legs a little bit more, hit some more meets maybe, do some, do some pulls on the highway when opportunities arise. So I'm going to a bigger fuel tank. TX2K is in Texas this week. They just opened up the track today, Monday. And so there's gonna be cars there testing and camping and doing the whole deal. I do wanna drive around and do some meets and stuff because there is just a ton of cool cars in town right now. I keep seeing 
people posting pictures of meets that are just full of just all kinds of awesome cars. They're all over the place. It's going to be that way all week. So do need to get the car ready to go. Bigger fuel cell up and running and we can go out and go kind of cruise around with the boys. Uh, so right now what I'm doing is putting the valve covers on and I just wanted to take a minute for a little conversation about parts. So I might get some flack for what I'm about to say from some of you guys, but just know I have the best intentions here with this advice. Um, I've been working in uh, general service automotive field for, I don't know, like 15 years or better. Um, and we've really come to a point where um, getting good parts is, is, is a lot harder to do than it used to be. I've seen since pre-2020, which, you know, things happen in 2020, Previous to that, you could get a decent part from a parts store. You could get a decent aftermarket part, a doorman, a, a freaking A1 Cardone, or uh, even Master Pro stuff was fine. I used to put that on customers' cars all the time. Um, never had any issues of it uh, in excess. But lately I have seen firsthand a turn in the quality of parts that are available to us. Um, just I'm constantly having problems with um, all the parts store parts. They're just all just, I mean, they've probably been Chinese made for years and years, but they are so much worse now than they ever were before. And they're more expensive. Um, I'm running into this a lot more and more. So totally unpaid advertisement here, but I, my favorite place to get parts right now is eBay. I have been copying genuine Toyota parts like this valve cover. Um, off eBay and it's not even expensive you guys people think OEM parts is synonymous with expensive parts but it simply is not true especially in the case of Toyota's like most of the seals and stuff for the 2JZ are pretty inexpensive um, I have, so I've gotten to where I'm just using OEM seals on everything for my engine I get them on eBay eBay's fast like it'll say like eight days delivery or like four to eight days or something but it's always like three days it's always fast uh, sellers are super responsive to questions. I'm obsessed with eBay OEM parts right now. I, I did some time at the dealership early in my career, and then I did a lot of time in the aftermarket independent repair shops using a lot of O'Reilly's parts. And I gotta tell you, nothing excites me more than seeing an OEM box and just open it up and just, you can just feel the difference. So I'd really definitely wanna urge you guys to try to go OEM, even on your performance stuff. The OEM is just better. Um, so that's what I like to do. That's what I've been doing lately. Um, and it hasn't really cost me any extra time or any extra money. That's crazy. But I just wanted to give that little bit of advice as I start to wrap up this project. We will be starting the car here pretty soon. I've got a couple more little things to do, but uh, I'll be putting fluids in the car maybe tomorrow. Today is Tuesday. So that's been like four days. And uh, got the whole, you know, starting with the block and got it all back together. And we're going back together now. So. We will be starting up soon. Oh my God, y'all. Y'all, just look at this. Oh, look how beautiful that is. Whenever I blew the engine, it blew this seal right off of my old cap. It was the original cap. Watch this now, watch this now. Uh, oh, you just can't beat it, dude. I think I spent like 16 bucks on that. Y'all, hey it's been a week. I got pretty sick, I think, and was down for the last couple of nights. It's now Friday. Haven't touched the car since Tuesday. I feel much better today. I'm gonna get this thing together and running. All I really gotta do is put the intake manifold on and run a couple of hoses and uh, fill it up full of oil. So we will get a start up tonight. It's TX2K weekend here in Dallas, as I might've said before. But I haven't decided if I'm gonna get in on all that drama this weekend. Everyone's all freaked out about the cops acting crazy. But I hear they're giving frivolous tickets for front plates and bias ply tires and things that might be annoying. So I might just not give them a reason, but we'll see how that goes. Anyway, right now I'm gonna get the intake going on this thing and we need to get it started up with our brand new short block. All right, so I've given it a good 30 seconds of cranking, try to build a little bit of oil pressure and prime up the fuel system. Don't see any leaks, so let's go ahead and see if we can give her a fire. 